Christ is in our midst. Welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. Today on August 23rd, we commemorate the apodosis of the Dormition of our Most Holy Lady, the Theotokos, as well as our Holy Father Irenaeus, Bishop of Leons, and Lupus the Martyr. Regarding the Holy Father Irenaeus, the Holy Martyr Irenaeus was born in Asia Minor about the year 120, and in his youth was a disciple of St. Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna. St. Irenaeus was sent to Lanz in Gaul to be a fellow laborer with Pothinus, Bishop of Leons, who had also been a disciple of St. Polycarp. After the martyrdom of St. Pothinus, St. Irenaeus succeeded him as Bishop of Leons. Besides the assaults of paganism, Irenaeus found himself compelled to do battle with many Gnostic heresies, against which he wrote his greatest work, A Refutation and Overthrow of Knowledge Falsely So Called. He was also a peacemaker within the Church. When Victor, Bishop of Rome, was prepared to excommunicate the Christians of Asia Minor following a different tradition celebrating Pascha, Irenaeus persuaded him to moderate his zeal and mediated peace. He made Leon's an illustrious bastion of orthodoxy and a school of piety and sealed his confession with martyrdom about the year 202 during the reign of Septimus Severus. He is not to be confused with St. Irenaeus, Bishop of Miriam, also celebrated day, who was beheaded and cast in river in Theophore under Diocletian. Regarding St. Uh, Lupus, who was a slave of St. Demetrius of Thessaloniki, the holy martyr Lupus was a devoted servant of the holy great martyr Demetrius and was present at his martyrdom. Later, when his own labors in confession of faith became known to the rulers, St. Lupus himself was arrested, given over to torture, and finally beheaded for Christ. It was St. Lupus who took the body of St. Demetrius and buried it so that it would not be desecrated, and so he was the first to witness the myrrh streaming of his master, and he himself receives the glory as a great martyr of Christ. Within the epistle, which is for the Dormition, Brethren, have this in mind amongst yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. In other words, Jesus Christ didn't have to pretend to be God. He is God. Rather, he lowered himself. He became a human being. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore, not only did he die, he died ignobly in pain and torture. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is why, again, the Panagia is so amazing to us not just because of her birth giving, because in every fiber of her being, she confessed the glory of God. So we are called to emulate her, and this is what we do, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Regarding the gospel according to St. Luke, at that time Jesus entered a village and a woman called Martha received her in her house. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. She went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve you alone? Tell her then to help me. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Again, this is very, very poignant to us because Mary chose the good thing to listen to the teachings of the Lord, which is what Mary, the mother of our Lord, has done her whole life. But Martha represents us in the sense that she is distracted. She's trying to do everything and missing the big picture. And so Jesus Christ calls her name twice on purpose to show that he is attentive to her individually, that he is not leaving her on the by side, that he is attentive to Martha and her concern. She's anxious. And this is true for all of us. We're all anxious. You are anxious and troubled about many things. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion, which shall not be taken away from her. As he said this, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that you sucked. Indeed, this is true. Blessed is Mary for all these things. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is why we honor Mary, the Theotokos, because she heard the word of God, kept it, she guarded it. She is our example. May her intercessions always be with us. Blessed and wonderful day.